It's a warm Wednesday here at Nippert Stadium for the home opener of the UC Bearcats women's lacrosse team as they take on number 10 ranked Michigan Wolverines. I'm Alex Perez alongside Christian Pagan. Christian, how are you doing today? Doing good on this fine Wednesday afternoon. Nice sunny day, blue skies, not a cloud in sight. Yeah, not a cloud in sight, too. It had been warmer the last week, but I still think it's going to be some great weather for the lacrosse today. Um, looking at some of the stats, Cincinnati lost their home opener against Marquette 12-18. to Michigan, they beat their season opener, Jacksonville, 19-1. to Kind of shows you that they have had a pretty good team, being ranked number 10th already. Um, what is it going to take for the UC Bearcats to win today, Christian? Well, when you look at Michigan, there's talent all over the field. Great attacking, great midfield, and great defenders. You see, with their great attacking trio they have, I think if they can penetrate the Michigan defense and find gaps and gain one-on-one -on -one advantages and score, I think they have a good chance of winning this game against a great Wolverines team. Yeah, the UC offense led by Cameron Callahan had 56 goals last year as a freshman, led all freshmen nationally in D1 wins lacrosse. Also on her sides, Ava Geller, who had not had a single point, or excuse me, had two games in her career where she had not recorded a single point transfer from Radford. And then on the other side, Kylie Joya, she had appeared in all 18 games last year. She started four of them. She really started to heat up at the end of the year, so hopefully get those girls going. On the defensive side, what does Cincinnati have to do to take care of Jill Smith and the Michigan offense? Well, first off, Jill Smith, such an amazing athlete. 77 points last year. It's broke the Michigan single season points record. If you're the Cincinnati Bearcats defense, you cannot allow Joe Smith to gain space and have a one-on-one -on -one against the goalie. You might have to consider even doubling her within the 12-meter fan. fan. <laughs> but just don't let Joe Smith take over this game because she has shown many times that she can do that. Yes, definitely going to have to take care of Jill Smith and, you know, a lot of other members of the Michigan offense, Kaylee Dyer as well as Jane Federoff, both scoring five points against Jacksonville in their season opener, not just this year, but last year as well. So we are going to head to break as the players finish warm-ups, and we'll be back for the start of the game. You're listening to UC Women's Cross on Bearcast Radio.
Here we are back inside Nippert Stadium. I'm Alex Perez alongside Christian Pagan as the PA announcer announces the starting lineups for both lacrosse teams. We will do the same. So starting at midfield, number three for Michigan, Annabelle Burke. Starting on defense, number six, Grace Callahan. Starting on attack, number 10, Caroline Davis. Starting on attack, number 11, Kaylee Dyer. Starting on defense, number 13, Maddie Burns. Starting on attack, number 14, Jill Smith, who we touched on earlier in the pregame show. Starting on defense, number 15, Maya Rutherford. Starting on defense, number 19, Taylor Cullen. Starting at midfield, number 20, Ava Class. Starting at number 22, on attack, Lily Montemirano. Starting on defense, number 26, Jordan Harrison. And then in goal for the Michigan Wolverines, number 50, Aaron O'Grady. And then we'll take a look at the UC starting lineup. Starting at midfield, number three, Julie Rose. Starting on attack, number four this year for the Bearcats, Cameron Callahan. A switch from last year, started at number five, now switched to her old number, number four. Starting on defense, number nine, Alexis Rich. Starting at midfield, number 12, Ava Geller. Starting at midfield, number 17, Grace Jenny. Starting at midfield, number 18, Mia Fedorovich. Starting on attack, number 27, Elizabeth Murphy. Starting on defense, number 29, Sophia Fanati. Starting at midfield, number 30, Lauren Ottensmeyer. Starting on defense, number 35, Grace Hirschman. Starting on defense, number 41, Danny Milkvy. And in the cage for the Bearcats, the grad student from Denver, Victoria Makers, and number 33. So it's going to be a Pretty good game here. UC looking for its first win against Michigan. 0-3 all-time last year. Lost 16-3. Year before that, lost 20-7. And then in 2019, lost 19-9. Last spring, though, the Bearcats notched 11 wins, seven of those being at home, the most since 2019. 12 overall wins and 10 at home. Also, one thing to note last year, Christian, is that the Bearcats did not lose two games in a row. Now, Michigan being a number 10 opponent, it is going to be a tough task, but I feel like the Bearcats have a lot of resilience to this team and can bring something to the table and maybe push uh, against this Wolverines team and maybe get double-digit goals today. Yeah, and when you have a great team like Michigan that comes into town and on your field, that really motivates the home team. If you're Cincinnati, you should be motivated that a top 10 team in the nation in Michigan is playing on your field and you have an opportunity to upset them. Yes, yeah, Cincinnati last year scored their outscored their opponents 221 to 192 last season with a .739 shot percentage on goal. Bearcats also recorded 513 shots compared to their opponents with 438. UC has also scored di double digit goals in 23 of their last 34 games. So again, that's another thing that should motivate them, hopefully get 24 out of 25 double digit goals in their last games. 18 of those have resulted in wins for the Bearcats and eight of those have been at home. The Bearcats will roster 39 athletes for the 2024 season. 39 is made up of 28 returning players, one transfer, and 10 freshmen, seven of those 39 players being Ohio, nat Ohio natives. Repping a new number this season, as I touched on, Cameron Callahan returns to the roster to number four, as she was number five last year. She wore that number in high school, decided to go back to her roots. Maybe she can even, you know, Improve the goal status that she had last year. Already had 56 goals last year. I think she could do even more this year. And then head coach Gina Thomas enters her 12th season leading the Bearcats. She is joined by assistant coaches Haley Hardy, Jamie Redding, who both begin their third season with Cincinnati. So Cincinnati last year lost 7-13 to number 6 James Madison University in the American Athletic Conference Tournament. And this is their last year in the American Athletic Conference. Next year will be joining the Big 12. How exciting is that, that they're the last team to join the Big 12, and Cincinnati will fully be a Big 12 school? It definitely means a lot. You know, this entire environment around this university, ever since the news came out that they would be joining the Big 12, has been electric here. I mean, this is such a great opportunity for the Cincinnati lacrosse team to be taking the next step in the journey and joining a great conference in the Big 12. Yeah, it has been awesome to see every single team. I think me and Ethan Herzog touched on this in our broadcast for the men's basketball team on Saturday against number five Houston, who they unfortunately lost to. But Cincinnati has shown that they can p compete at the Big 12 level, level, even in big schools like Houston, like Iowa State, like Kansas, and big sports like basketball. Football, not so much, but I believe we're going to see an improvement this year. As the players start to take the field, 
O'Grady and Makers go to their respective cages. And in to take the draw control for the Wolverines is Montemirano, number 22. And then in to take the draw control for the Bearcats is Julie Rose. Showtime. It is showtime. Just waiting on a couple. Looks like they're waiting on the media, media timeouts. Making sure ESPN Plus is up to date. Who Ethan Herzog, a member of the Bearcast Sports Radio, is doing the ESPN Plus sports broadcast for the women's lacrosse team today. So shout out to him. That's gonna be a, a that's a great opportunity for him. Yeah, I mean he's doing the women's team on the radio too. You know, just having such a great year so far. I mean he's doing a lot being our director, take on a big workload, and he's doing such a great job. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome to see his success, and, you know, I'm sure he, he's just getting started. As the referee will place the ball in between the sticks for the draw control. Middies line up outside of the attacking circle. Whistle blows, ball up in the air, and the draw control controlled by the Wolverines. So starting off with it is Monte Morano. Some substitutions. Whistle was blown right away. Not exactly sure what for. Looks like they want to stop the clock. Not exactly sure what the whistle was for. It might be a penalty. Looks like it's going to be a yellow card on Ava Geller. And last year, Cincinnati had a problem with yellow cards. They led all of Division One in fouls. What do you got to do to stop that? There's a point of playing too aggressive and playing aggressive. I think the Bearcats have been playing too aggressive, but you need to tone it down just a little bit and not commit, you know, fouls that are not necessary. I completely agree, yeah. Cincinnati cannot go a man down this early in against the Michigan Wolverines, especially since they're ranked number 10. So Wolverines work it back at X. Juicing the ball. It comes up to the right side of the fan, to the left side for Schwab. Down inside the pie slice, back at X. Looking, trying to cut to the cage is Kaylee Dyer. And it looks like she'll be on the left hash inside of the left pie slice. Will be a free position. It's an awkward angle to the cage, though, if she wants to take the shot. She's got the speed to do it. Pulls it out. Back up top, across. Looking, and some kind of violation on the Bearcats. So a free position shot will go to Ava Class on the right side of the fan, the far hash from the eight meter fan. She takes a shot off the post. Had a chance to get to the left side of Victoria Makers who left it open, but the post saved that one. The post with its first save of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Makers still looking for her first as the Bearcats start the clear. With it now. Is Sophia Fanati being triple teamed, able to escape her way. Goes to the far side looking. Going through a bunch of defenders. She's still with the ball. Geller released from the box. That one over the head of Grace Hirschman to Danny Milkvie. She'll give it to Fedorovich who enters the restraining line and goes to the far side of the field around the 10 where she'll stop and regather. Here's Geller now across. Looking, trying to dodge is Geller. She gets pushed in the back. No call there. She's at X now to the extended goal line for Elizabeth Murphy. Murphy with it. Looking to get to the crease. Nowhere to go. Being defended there. She's still with it. We'll give it to Callahan. Over to Joya. Joya back at X. To Murphy. Now up to the top for Ottensmeyer. Ottensmeyer at the top of the fan trying to dodge. Looks to the alley, shoots. Save there by O'Grady. Trying to clear it, but ball on the ground. Picked up there by Joya. Trying to throw it across and just intercepted there by the Michigan defense, Maddie Burns. Looks like she was looking for Callahan on the left side, streaking through, just couldn't get it. Yeah, Michigan did a good job of having their sticks up. Now here on a fast break chance. Here's a chance, a shot, saved by Makers. On the shot there from Jane Federoff. 
Scored five points in that season opener against Jacksonville. Hirschman running up the far side of the 50 with it to the 40. Try to get a pass. Regains her errant pass. Here's Callahan on the far side. Dodging to the middle. Excuse me, that's Ottensmeyer. She'll give it to Joya. We'll slow down the offense. Up to the top for Ottensmeyer at the 20-yard line. The 12-meter fan sits at the 16-yard line. With it now is Callahan looking. Pulls out. Here's Geller. Geller dodging to her left. Has a shot, and that trickled through, but off the post. Grady got a stick on it to slow it up, but then it hit the post and just stayed out. Two posts already here with 11.41 to go. That one almost went in. It was bouncing around for a little bit. And here's an interception from Grace Hirschman. Here's a fast break chance. Ottensmeyer with it to Murphy. Murphy, the stick in her left hand. She goes to the extended goal line on the right side of the cage. She'll wait for the offense to set up. The whistle is blown. Waiting for the call here, and it looks like it might be an offsides call. There's going to be a man up opportunity now for the Bearcats. As going to the penalty box is Annabelle Burke. So the Bearcats will get a chance to man up. Should be an opportunity here to potentially get going and get the first score of the game. Yeah, look for them to work through <coughs> Cameron Callahan as well. Starting on the right hash, here's Geller. Works it around for Callahan. Thought about it, excuse me, that's Ottensmeyer. Back up to Geller, across. Gets it back, Geller looks, thought about shooting it, didn't. Got the 12 meter fan to Ottensmeyer. Ottenmeyer across to Joya. Joya looks all the way over for Haley Joy Simpson. The ball on the ground. Callahan tried to pick it up. Defended there by five or six Wolverine defensemen. Pulling it out now is Ottensmeyer. She's got it at X. To Murphy. Up to Simpson. Up to the top for Geller. Geller to Ottensmeyer. Fakes a shot. Back to Geller at the top of the fan. Directs traffic to Callahan, who popped out for a shot, but just couldn't get it in her stick. She gets pushed down, and it looks like it'll be a free position shot for Callahan. So Callahan, three for three in the season opener against Marquette. Oh, and they're going to say it happened outside of the eight-meter fan, so no for pre free position shot. But there's goal scored by Allie Keith on the feed there from Ava Geller. And the Bearcats have a one to nothing lead. So it looks like Allie Keith found some space within the eight meter fan. Got a nice shot, one on one against the keeper and won that battle, put it right through the back of the net. Yeah, what a chance. As I was saying, it wasn't a free position shot. It was a, just a foul outside the eight meter fan. So they had to start at the top of the 12 meter fan. Cameron Callahan was able to feed it all the way over to Ava Geller. And then just right on the crease, wide open, is Allie Keith, and she's able to put it behind O'Grady for a Bearcats lead. And we mentioned, you know, Michigan, or excuse me, the Bearcats being, have an opportunity of having a man up, you know, take advantage of that and get scoring on the board, you know, and take the lead, get the first points of the game. So they're able to do that. Bearcats lead it 1 nothing with 10 20 left in the first quarter. In to take the draw control is Monte Morano and Julie Rose. Ball's placed between the sticks. Whistle blows up in the air, and a second draw control one for the Wolverines. But stick checked out of her stick was Jill Smith. Picked up there by Rose. Ball is still on the ground, finally picked up by Smith. On the far side of the field at the 30, she gets within the restraining line. Smith will settle the offense. She'll hand it to Dyer. Up at the top now for Schwab. Top of the fan for Monte Morano. They work the left side of the fan. Now back at X, now to the right side. Up at the top, Monte Morano. Here's Smith. She's got it back. She played catch with her attackman, being defended there. And the ball is on the ground. That one picked off by Haley Joy Simpson. Simpson looks, defending as Kaylee Dyer was trying to attack her. 
Simpson still with it at the 50 to Fanati. Fanati's got it. Back over to the far side of the field. Setting up the offense now is Cameron Callahan. Up to the top for Keith, the goal scorer for the Bearcats. Keith looks, running to the right side. Down to the extended goal line for Elizabeth Murphy. Looks, trying to dodge, can't do so. Now back at X. Murphy still with it. Trying to run to her left. Up to the top now. Here's Ottensmeyer. Oh, a nice little dodge, a juke, and a save by O'Grady. I think that actually might have went wide, but a nice little move there from Lauren Ottensmeyer. Nice move, one-on-one, Ottensmeyer. -on -one. Little shimmy. Goes in, has a nice opportunity for a shot. Just couldn't get the fall, but Bearcats retain possession. Able to get Jordan Harrison out of her shoes. Uh, it's Meyer on Harrison again. Will she do it a second time? She's thinking about it, decides not to. She'll give it. And now here on the crease was Haley Joy Simpson. Ripped off the top of the dome. A save there by Aaron O'Grady. Shot clock reset to 60. Here's Callahan with it on the crease, being double teamed, trying to get through, just doesn't do so. Good defense there from the Wolverines. 90 second shot clock changes at possession. 60 second shot is reset with a shot on goal. The Wolverines with it now. Here's Smith up to the top for Monte Murano. She's got space, but they don't want to take the opportunity. Back at X now. Here's Dyer being defended there by Rich. Up to the top for Monte Murano. Across, a rip and in. That one scored by Julia Schwab. And the Wolverines tie it up. Yeah, for most of that possession, you know, the Wolverines started off possession with numbers and they always, looks like they had a player open most of the time. They always found that crease and they take advantage of that and get a nice shot to score to yep. tie things up. Just a lot of movement there from the Bearcats as the Wolverines were able to get them running around and put the goal into the top right behind Victoria Bakers. We are tied at one with 7.27 left here in the first quarter. You're listening to UC Women's Across on Bearcast Radio. Here we are, back with 7.27 left to go here in the first quarter. Wolverines just tied it up on the goal there from Julia Schwab. Bearcats jump to an early lead with 10.47 left to go in the first. The goal coming from Ali Keith. And Michigan just tied it up after, right before we went to break. It's a 1-1 game. What have you seen so far from the UC offense and defense? Well, we look at the offense. They had a lot of possession within Michigan's defense, and they have five shots so far compared to Michigan's three. And there was about a couple minutes where, you know, they're really controlling the possession down near the Wolverines' net. Now, on defense, they start off the game pretty well, but 
in that last possession, they allowed Michigan to get some space, which eventually ended up for a goal for the Wolverines. So just tighten up, make some adjustment, adjustments. And I talked about it in the pregame, make sure the Wolverines do not have any space. And once they just, you know, this is still sediment of the game, you know, they have to find their rhythm, of course. But so far, good start for the Bearcats. Yeah, Bearcats seem to have settled in pretty well as they won the draw control and now start to set up the offense. Callahan with it. Over to Joya. She'll give it to Murphy. Bearcats making some subs. Back at X now, it's Joya. Joya looking. Over to Callahan. Callahan with it. Being defended there. Oh, a nice little spin move. Still couldn't get by the defense of Maddie Burns. Here's Ottensmeyer. Ottensmeyer. She's trying to juke. Being double teamed, has to pull it out to Murphy. Murphy looking, sticking her left hand. She's going towards the left. Passes it to the left side. Here's Geller. Geller to the right. Inside the 8-meter fan, a shot saved by O'Grady. Trying to shoot against the green. Had a good idea, but O'Grady read it all the way into her stick as the Wolverines start to clear. With it at midfield. It's number six, Grace Callahan. She'll give it up, and Michigan is within the restraining line. Here's Class on the extended goal line for Dyer. Now at X, it's Davis, Caroline Davis. That is Lucy Davis, number 12. She is her sister. Wolverine still with it now at the top of the fan, working it around, trying to get inside that 8-meter fan. Here's Jill Smith across for Class. They've got it looking. Smith got a far pass. She dodges to the cage. She scores. Running through three defensemen and puts it right between the wickets of Victoria Makers. Michigan up two to one. And the Wolverines right there, really great with ball possession and passing the ball. They're very patient right there. And Joe Smith, we mentioned her in the pregame show. 77 points last year, and she got space in between Defenders and inside the 8-meter fan practically shot that one point blank off the ground past the goalie, and she keeps doing amazing things for the Wolverines. Yeah, that's her fifth goal of the season for Smith. And like you said, she just had space, was able to get around the Bearcats. They were kind of running around, and the Wolverines, they were just moving the ball really quick and able to get the Bearcats out of position, which allowed Smith to go run right between three of them as they were miscommunicating on which one had her. Another draw control now, Montemarano and Ru Rose once again. Michigan with the edge in the draw controls, two to one so far, as well as the score. 5.41 left in the first quarter. Referee trying to place the ball in between the sticks. Rose has to wipe her hands on the stick. They wait for her. Whistle blows, ball up in the air, and another draw control there for the Wolverines. When they try to start fast, here's Smith, the most recent goal scorer, up to Gooch. Across now, that's Schwab. She's one of the goal scorers for the Wolverines. Now at X, they work it around, up to Smith. Here's Gooch, she's trying to dodge to her left, looks. Down there for Fedorov. Now with X for Davis. Up to the top. Here's Monty Morano. Here's Smith. Down to Fedorov. Fedorov back to Davis. Wolverines just working it around. And a nice pass intercepted there from Julie Rose. And she'll start to clear a good pickoff there from Rose. The Wolverines right there had a lot of ball movement. But the Bearcats stayed patient and stayed calm. Did not allow any Michigan Wolverines to get space or a crease. Great job by the defense. Yeah, trying to cut there. Oh, and a missed opportunity now. Here is Murphy. She's going, gets double teamed, looking for help as the Bearcats are making substitutions. And she got it knocked out of her stick, but they're saying she was pushed out of bounds. So it'll stay Bearcats ball. Ottensmeyer with it. A little shovel pass to Callahan. Callahan trying to work there on Burns. She does try to shoot it. Burns just got her the end of her stick as Callahan shot it, popped out, and O'Grady made the easy save. Wolverines start the clear. In the middle of the field now with it is Grace Callahan for the Wolverines. A nice pass to Schwab. Schwab 
across for Fedorov. Into the middle for Smith, and she rips it top left and puts it in. Three to one, Wolverines. Smith just cut it right in between the hashes. Caught a crease within the Bearcats defense and got another shot about five yards away from the goal. And within five yards, she is a deadly player. She's not going to miss those shots. She's going to take advantage of those opportunities 99.9% .9 of the time. Yeah, just a nice play there from the cut of Jill Smith, but also the pass of Fedorov. She got it across the field from the right hash mark to the left hash mark. Jill Smith coming down the middle, able to find her as the Bearcats were turning to find the ball and just able to walk right down Broadway. She puts it into the top left behind Victoria Makers for a Wolverines 3-1 lead. 3.57 to go in the first quarter. Bearcats jumped out to a 1-0 lead, but since then, three unanswered goals by Michigan. Also, three goals within, looks like, three and a half minutes, too. You know, just like that, how quick things can change. Let's see if the Bearcats adjust. I know Gina Oliver's not going to be happy. Another draw control won by the Wolverines. Here's Class with it. Up now for Burke. Burke being defended there by Keith. Up to the top. They work it around, Montemirano to Smith on the left side. Here's Fedorov. Looks to Davis. Now with it is Dyer. Back to Davis, across for Fedorov. Here's Smith, she's looking for the hat trick. And she shoots, saved by Makers. Try to put it low past Makers and she was ready, able to make the save. Yeah, and Smith's first goal was off the ground. She tried doing it again, but this time couldn't go through. Good awareness there from Victoria Makers. Let's see if the Bearcats, as they start this clear, are able to set up some offensive prowess. Getting in there is Simpson. She'll give it to Joya. Joya on the right side. Coming to the 10-yard line of the fan, kind of pulling out. Here's Geller. Geller dodging the alley. She shoots, gets hit hard as she shot. It might be a free position shot. Took a lot of contact there. And it looks like it will be from the right hash of the fan. Just inside the fan, right where the fan and the pie slice meet. Geller will get a chance. Bearcats were four for seven on the free position against Marquette. Can Geller do it? She looks, rips, try to go low, and O'Grady was ready for that. Another save for O'Grady. He's already got four on today. The Wolverines start the clear. Up over the stick of Ottensmeyer. Wolverine still with it. On the far side, it's Kaylee Dyer. Works it at X for Davis to Fedorov. Up for Burke. Now it's Smith. Smith directing traffic. Up to the top for Maryfield. She's seeing her first action of the day. Wolverine's working it around counterclockwise. Back to the left side for Burke. Burke gets double teamed, a good job there from Alexis Rich, able to knock it loose and picking it up was Allie Keith, who feeds it to Murphy, who feeds it across now for Ottensmeyer. She gets inside the restraining line. A quick clear there for the Bearcats. Ottensmeyer look, trying to dodge, being defended there by Rutherford. But she'll decide to pull it out. Here's Joya, down low for Murphy, on the crease, off the post. Haley Joy Simpson had all day to put it in and just ripped it right off the pipe. She was wide open, that one off the post. Great counterattack, though, by the Bearcats. That might be an opportunity they look back at and wish they had. Defensive breakdown for the Wolverines. Let's see if they can get something going. Wolverines now with it, though. It's Smith who picks up the ground ball. A nice little move there. And she'll settle it off. It's Dyer with it. Starts to walk slowly in to the edge of the fan on the right side of the extended goal line, gives it back at X. Davis working it to Fedorov, who works it to Smith. Smith getting direction from her head coach, Hannah Nielsen, her seventh season as the Mid Wolverines head coach. Wolverines still working it around. Here's Gooch with it on the right hash, trying to dodge, defended by Geller. Gives it at X now, it's Davis. Up to the top for Fedorov. Here's Smith across. 
Wolverine still looking for a shot. 25 left to go on the shot clock. 30 left in the quarter. Here's Schwab. Defended there. And a cut and score there from Kaylee Tyre. Able to cut back door. Just snuck right in. Able to catch it, release it, and Wolverines go up 4-1. to one. Patience, patience, patience. They took the shot clock all the way down to 16, working the ball around. And they get a nice cut by Kaylee Dyer, and she put it right in the back of the net from the right side. Yeah, just a, just a defensive breakdown for the Bearcats. I mean, they had everything they wanted. Kaylee Dyer was able to just find the sneaky lane. and She's able to put it inside of the cage for a Wolverines 4-1 to lead. 24 seconds in the quarter still remains. And when you're, you know, playing defense for that long, you know, nearly a minute, it's hard to maintain that control. And like you said, just a defensive breakdown because you're guarding for 45 seconds trying to make sure nothing bad happens, maintain that control, and it's just going to fall through at some point. Yep, Wolverine's doing a great job at working the ball around. Now in to take the draw control for the Bearcats is Danny Milkvey who has a single season record for draw controls at UC. She set that last year with 114. Unfortunately, can't come up with this one. An errant pass, though, on the ground. Picked up there by Alexis Rich. There's 10 seconds. Try to give it over to Ottensmeyer. See if the Wolverines try to get a last-second shot. Five to go. With it is Dyer. She cuts to the left. She shoots, and she scores right before the end of the quarter. Got her a bouncing ball in between the legs of Victoria Makers. And before the horn sounded, the Wolverines will go up 5-1 to one on a goal from Kaylee Dyer. That was a 70-yard counterattack in 12 seconds. Just shows you how fast this game is and how quickly a 1-0 lead within 8 minutes gets squandered to a 5-1 deficit for the Bearcats. Wolverines up 5-1 to one on the two recent goals from Kaylee Dyer. You'll be back for the second quarter as you're listening to UC Women's Across on Bearcast Radio. Back for the start of the second quarter. I'm Alex Perez alongside Christian Pagan. Wolverines find themselves at a comfortable 5-1 to one lead, but as I said right before we went to break, Christian, a one nothing lead can be squandered in eight minutes to a 5-1 deficit. What do you think the Bearcats could do to reverse that? Well, I think they have to capitalize on their offensive attacks that they had. You know, they definitely had a lot of good looks. And in a perfect world, you know, this score could be realistically 4-4. Four to four. If you take away that last counterattack by Michigan, you know, the Bearcats, they've had their opportunities in the Michigan defense end and just couldn't get their opportunities to fall. They couldn't capitalize. But overall, defensively, you just have to make those adjustments. And 
stop having Michigan control the, the shot clock. You know, they're winding it down. And as we mentioned earlier, you can only guard and control defense so long before a collapse is going to happen. So they have to just make sure Michigan does not have any creases and not let Michigan dominate the shot possession. Yeah, to touch on that too, as you said, the, the score could realistically be 4-4 four to four if you look at the shots on goal, 6 each. But the main difference is Aaron O'Grady, the keeper for the gold, the keeper for the Wolverines, has five saves compared to Victoria Makers one. If the Bearcats are able to squeak just a couple more by her, that also shows you that Aaron O'Grady, she's just an outstanding goaltender. That is so true. Yes, you know she had eight saves in the game versus Jacksonville. Had no great player. Had no goals in the last three quarters of that game. Let's see if the Bearcats can break the trend today as Wolverines won that draw control they start on offense it's Montemarano for Burke they work it around counterclockwise -clock -clock once again here's Dyer she's got two goals to Smith who also has two goals Montemarano on the right side of the fan now down for Smith here's Davis back up to Smith at the top and that pass got intercepted Ball is on the ground, but picked up by Smith. Just kind of bounced right into her stick. Here's Burke with it. Now at X, Fetter off to Davis. Up for Dyer, now to Smith. Smith back to Dyer. Dropped the pass, but able to pick it up as there was no pressure on her. Here's Fetter off with it at the extended goal line. Back to Davis at X, tries to work the crease. Defended there by number 41, Danny Milkvie. Here's Montemirano with it, trying to get through, double teamed, and it looks like there's going to be a yellow card. Might just be a free position shot, no extra foul. It will be a free position shot from the right center hash for Lily Montemirano. Whistle blows, and a save there by Makers. A good shot there, but a better save from Makers. Ball will stay with the Wolverines as they were first to the end line. Here's Burke with it on the right side. Working it around counterclockwise again for the Wolverines. Trying to look for the cutting. Montemirano couldn't do so. Davis up to the top for Burke. Burke back to Davis. Around for Fedorov. Up top for Dyer. Dyer looks up for Smith. She rips it way over the net. Still Wolverines ball. 30 seconds left to go on the shot clock. And here's a cut from Montemirano and a better save, though, from Makers. I believe she got that with a stick. What a save. But the shot clock will reset to 60. And like you said, Christian, uh, starting to defend for a minute or more. Yeah, this is where it gets dangerous. You know, if you're the Bearcats defense, you cannot collapse here. Here's Burke. To Davis. Now to Fedorov. Up for Dyer. Dyer looks, cuts. She gets through and puts it up and in for the hat trick. Able to put her stick low and shoot a rising shot to the top right just past the stick of Victoria Makers, and she gives the Wolverines a 6-1 to one lead. You can only defend for so long, and the Wolverines just dominating the start of the second quarter. Shot after shot, great saves by the Bearcats and Victoria Makers, but like, like I mentioned, you know, it's a collapse is going to happen if you are playing defense for that long. And credit to the Wolverines for controlling the possession, having great ball movement, and just playing patiently. You know, they are definitely wearing down the Bearcats' defense. Yep. Just having the ball, being able to work it, you know, like I said right before, touched on it, they're getting into that minute time, and once again, it shows. Kaylee Dyer also, she was a Big Ten player to watch in 2024. Also an academic big t academic All Big Ten in 2023. Five points against Jacksonville in the season opener, and she's already got three goals today against the Bearcats. Yeah, last year, 27 total points with 16 of those being goals. So far this year, five goals. With 12.42 left in the second quarter. And to take the draw control, it's Monte Murano. For the Wolverines, and then for the Bearcats, it's number 19, Taya Work. 
Ball is on the ground and picked up there by Maddie Burns. They're going to go a fast break. Here's Dyer again looking for a fourth. Hirschman able to keep her out. Here's Schwab across now. That's Callie Norris. She'll give it up to Fedorov. Fedorov on the right hash to the left hash. A pass for Schwab. She'll give it over to Gooch. Gooch on the 10-yard line. Looks. Working it around at X now. Dyer and getting it up. Norris. She's got it. Being defended there by Geller. Up across for Davis. Smith working it around. A shot from the left hash. Josie Gooch able to put it past Makers. And it's 7-1 to one Wolverines. That shot right there was about eight yards out from the left hash. As you mentioned, shot from the left side into the right end of the goal. I mean, the Michigan Wolverines are just tearing apart this Bearcats defense right now. Just moving the ball quick. They were moving it around. Got the Bearcats to kind of run towards them. And Josie Gooch was wide open, able to just load it up and rip it. Top 90 on the right side. She did that with a little bit of space, you know. As we mentioned, we cannot have the Wolverines attack to have space because they will make you pay and take advantage of those opportunities. And they've made them pay seven times already. Bearcats quickly down by six goals after getting a one to nothing lead. 12.34, or excuse me, 11.55. Left in the quarter. Up in the air, ball is on the ground, and again another draw control won by the Wolverines. It's Gooch who picks it up, looks to the crease. Oh, what a shot there from Jill Smith. A highlight reel goal, picks it up as she's running and shoots it behind her back for the eighth goal of the Wolverines for today. Look, I don't watch lacrosse, <laughs> but that was incredible. Oh, my goodness. Jill Smith, talk about... Outstanding. What an absolute pass, too, from Josie Gooch. That was a 25-yard pass. And just running. Alexis Rich, too, is all over Jill Smith. And Smith is just able to find it, get it in her stick, and throw it behind her back past Victoria Makers. That's Sports Center top 10 worthy right there. Yes, Just an incredible play by the Wolverines. And after a five-second difference between goals, Gina Oliver decides to take a timeout, and so will we. Michigan up 8-1 to one here with 11.47 left to go. You're listening to UC Women's Across on Bearcast Radio. Here we are back, 11.47 to go in the second quarter. And just a highlight reel goal from Jill Smith right before he went to break. Able to catch it, shoot it behind her back as she's running at full speed and falling all in one motion. Yeah, I mean, I've as I mentioned, I don't watch much lacrosse, but I know that right there was a crazy play and such an athletic move. I was going over with you. How does she even do that? <laughs> I, I can't. I don't know how. That is insane. Like, it, I know people are listening, too, on the radio, but if you have ESPN Plus or SportsCenter or something, 
I would be shocked that if that is not on a highlight reel for Sports Center top ten. Yeah, you will see it somewhere online. And or even on Sports Center, I think that was definitely a top ten play right there. That was just amazing, and just the pass from Josie Gooch too was about twenty five yards. I mean, she was right at the thirty yard line for the restraining line, able to throw it all the way down to about the five yard line, right where the crease starts, and Jill Smith able to just put it in. Another draw control one by the Wolverines. Eight draw controls one to Cincinnati's one. Been a key part of this Michigan dominance. As you mentioned, it all starts with the draw controls. Wolverines working it around counterclockwise. Looking to dodge. And it's Shreves. Back at X now. It's Dyer. Dyer tried to give it to a cutting Ava class. And was just able to miss it. Ball is still on the ground. They're fighting for it. It's like a swarm of kids around Candy. <laughs> Finally picked up by Class. She'll settle it. Here's Smith. Across for Fedorov. With it is Norris. At X now. That's CC Stein. Back up for Fedorov. Fedorov tries to dodge to the right. Looks. Now to Stein. Try to throw it. And a save there from Victoria Makers. A nice pass from Stein to Shreves. Victoria Maker is able to stand up and keep the ball out of the cage for that one. Bearcats start to clear. Milk fee across for Rich. Rich comes back to the near side. And on coming to the field now is Lexi Wolf. Starts it back, gives it to Milk fee. She's at the sea paw at center field. Now it's Wolf. Wolf gets into the restraining line. Let's see if the Bearcats can answer. Eight unanswered goals so far. It's Ottensmeyer. She'll let them get into position. Starting at the top with it is Callahan. Across. Here's Murphy. Murphy, she's looking to dodge to her left. Gives it to Ottensmeyer on the right half. She dodges to her right. Shovel pass to Callahan. Looking to get her going. Callahan being defended there. Pulls it out for Geller. Geller looks. Up to the top now, it's Ottensmeyer. Ottensmeyer switches sticks from her right to left, back to right. Now into the center for Lexi Wolf. Had it in her stick, got it pushed out. They fight for it. Finally picked up by the Wolverines, and they'll start to clear that ground ball from Taylor Cullen. You know, I like the idea of the offense by the Bearcats. Finding a crease inside, just couldn't catch it. Ended up in the hands of the Wolverines and here on this counterattack. They've got it. Already now at the extended goal line, and now at X, it's Stein. Gives it to the cutting Smith, and just lost possession. And looks like it's going to be a foul on the Wolverines, so the Bearcats will get a fresh clear. Rich getting the pass from her goaltender, goalkeeper, whichever one you want to use. Gives it across, and out of the stick of Lexi Wolf, and Smith has a breakaway. Trying to catch her, Smith gets to the fan. She shoots and scores. Able to put it between the legs of Victoria Makers. And poor Victoria Makers just did not have a shot there. Yeah, that was looks like a bad pass by the Bearcats. And Joe Smith was right there to pick it up. I mean, it was a fast break from the 30-yard line to the goal. I mean, like I mentioned, you know, Jill Smith one-on-one. -on -one, something she's going to take advantage of and something she's going to win most of the time. Just such... An incredible athlete and such a great day for her with her fourth goal today. Eighth of the season, just such an incredible player. Yeah, looking at the replay too, Ava LaRuffa, she tried to pass it to Lexi Wolf and looks like Wolf just took her eye off the ball at the last second, which allowed Smith to pick up the ground ball and run, like you said, 30 yards to the cage and able to just put it in for her fourth of the day, eighth of the season. If you're the Bearcats, to get possession, you have to win these draw controls. Something they haven't done well in this quarter. Let's see if they can change that here. Rose in to take the draw control once again. It's up in the air and won by Monte Murano. And there was already a foul on the Bearcats, so another draw control to the Wolverines. And they're starting to set up the offense. Callie Norris with it. 
Across. Here's Fedorov. Down to Stein. Around they work it. Stein gets it back from Dyer. Here's Fedorov. Up to the top for Burke. Across. Getting it now is Dyer. Dyer looks, being defended by Keith. She gets open, gets some space, gave it to Norris. Thought about it, decided not to. Here's Stein. She gets it back, plays catch, just lost it. Able to regain possession. Up at the top now, it's Norris. Norris on the left side of the 12-meter fan. Keith trying to defend her. Norris fakes a pass, gives it to Monte Morano. And it looks like there's a violation on the Bearcats. So it'll be a free position shot for Lily Montemirano on the right side of the hash of the fan. Wolverines are 0 for 1 on free position shots today. Here's a chance. She pulls it out. And that pass to Burke out of her stick but regains it. Gives it to Stein. Now at X for Dyer. Here's Fedorov up to the top for Montemirano. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Monte Morano down to Dyer. Defended there by Fedorovich. Up to the top for Burke. Burke looking. Bearcats getting aggressive. Wolverines looking to score. Oh, pass all over. <laughs> up to the top on the ground. Picking Three it up is Norris. Left. Wolverines are not going to get a chance, so Kaylee Dyer just throws it to the corner. And she was going to give the Bearcats the ball anyways, but a smart play there as they are going to have to go all the way down the field. LaRuffa gives it to Keith. We're in number five this year for the Bearcats. She's able to get inside the restraining line. Try to give it to Callahan, but a good read from Maddie Burns. Couldn't quite corral it. So the ground ball is picked up by Cameron Callahan. Ottensmeyer at the top. Directs traffic. Gives it to Callahan. Callahan trying to cut to the middle. Pulls up to Geller. Geller looks. Trying to give it across the field for Julie Rose and out of her stick. Annabelle Burke picks it up for the Wolverines and they start the clear. Wolverines still with it. Here's Burns on the far side. Being pressured there by Geller. We'll give it to Grady. Oh, Grady, excuse me. She'll give it just some help for Maya Rutherford. Back across for, excuse me, that's Maddie Burns. Wolverine starting to set up the offense. Here's Caroline Davis at the extended goal line. Backing up in the end zone. Waiting for subs to come on and off. Looks like they've got the personnel that they want. She'll hand it off for Norris, who'll give it to Gooch. And cross for Monte Morano. Fedorov to Dyer. Back to Fedorov. Looks, trying to dodge. Pulls it out. Here's Stein. Stein dodging back towards the middle. Up to the top, a little high for Norris. Able to corral it. Across to Gooch. Down to Davis. Davis cutting to the middle. Back to Montemirano at the top of the fan. Here's Fedorov. Trying to cut towards the cage. Goes behind the cage. Now it's Stein. Bearcats look like they're running around a bit. Here's Schwab. Now for Norris. Ten seconds left. Norris asking somebody to come for her. Come help. Tries to give it an X. Here's Davis. Back up to the top for Gooch. Across for Fedorov. Fedorov's going to have to rip it. Being defended there. Able to pull it out and a shot clock violation for the Bearcats. I know you touched on it earlier, Chris. You don't want to be defending for a minute or so as it tends to break down, but so far these past two possessions, Bearcats have been doing a good job defending them. Exactly, and after the timeout, you know, these last two defensive possessions, the Bearcats have done a great job in defending this furious Michigan Wolverines attack. Now they need to use that and capitalize on offense. As the Bearcats do get the ball inside of the restraining line, it's Cameron Callahan. She'll start at the top, wait for subs. She'll give it to Julie Rose. Rose kind of backs out, surveys the field. Allie Keith subbing on. Winding a little bit of time down. 3.53 left here in the second quarter. Julie Rose across for Joya. Joya sticking her left hand to her right. Back to her left, back to her right. Gives it to Keith. Keith looking to dodge towards the middle. Stops, stutters. 
pulls it out, and then that one got knocked out of the stick by Matty Burns. Rose able to pick it up, able to defend it from Matty Burns. And it looks like Burns is going to get a penalty. So the Bearcats will be a man up. This is a great opportunity right here for the Bearcats to take advantage of this and potentially score another goal. I believe their first goal came when they were man up two in the first quarter. This would be a great opportunity, like you said. So the foul is going to be on Matty Burns. Not exactly sure what for. I mean, it might have been because she hit her head or it was near her head space. So let's see what the Bearcats do. A man up. Joya for Murphy to the cutting Callahan. Saved by O'Grady, but she gets pushed. And it looks like... Not exactly sure if it's going to be a free position shot. It should be, as the foul occurred inside of the fan. It's going to be a free position shot for Callahan. Now, since they are a man up, it'll be interesting to see if she takes it from the far right hash or if she'll decide to pull out and set up the offense. We wait. Whistle blows. Callahan to the cage. Try to bounce it through, and O'Grady... Oh, just stood there and let it bounce into her stick. Another save. That is her seventh of the day. Already had eight against Jacksonville. Seems like she's on a trend to getting more depending on how the rest of this game goes. What? How many saves she had against Jacksonville? She might get in half in this game. Again, she allowed no goals in the last three quarters against Jacksonville. And so far, hasn't allowed a goal yet in this quarter. Like you said, eight saves in the half. Could translate into the second half with another eight saves, depending on how these Bearcats want to recuperate after the halftime. And their offense, they've been getting the looks. I mean, you have 12 shots. I mean, that's pretty good. And eight on goal. You're getting the looks, just not capitalizing. Got to capitalize on these opportunities, especially against this Wolverines team. As the Wolverines have it, they decide to... Juice the ball a little bit. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Norris. Norris has got it. To Gooch. Gooch looks. Back now at X. Stein with it. Up to the top for Norris. Norris looking to dodge. She tries to get around Haley Joy Simpson. She does and is able to put it. A floater pass. Victoria Makers just over her head. And the 10th goal for the Wolverines today. Even the Bearcats were double teaming her. She still found a way with the shot clock expiring to put it in the back of the net. Like you mentioned, that one was floating in the air for a while. Got to get your stick on it. And Victoria Makers just, the changeup kind of threw her off, which is what allowed the goal to just happen. So unfortunately... That is number 10 for the number 10 ranked team in women's lacrosse. As we take a timeout, 1.45 to go in the half. 10-1, to 1, Michigan up against the UC Bearcats. You're listening to UC Women's Lacrosse on Bearcats Radio.
Back inside Nippert Stadium, 1.45 to go in the second quarter before a 10-minute halftime. Wolverines lead the Bearcats 10-1. to Jill Smith has been a star, already had a highlight reel goal, four goals, two assists, and she is no stranger to this Bearcats defense as last year she had five goals and one assist in their matchup, six career goals against the Bearcats, and she tacked on four more today. Yeah, I mean... Just the preseason All-American doing preseason All-American things. So far, six points in this match. She had six points in the entire match versus Jacksonville, and she has that same amount within the first 19, or excuse me, 29 minutes of this game. Now, what makes it dangerous for this Bearcats offense and defense, you look at both sides of the ball, Jill Smith, she's an inside lacrosse top 50 player for the offense, and then on the defensive side, you have Maddie Burns, both Big Ten players to watch. Yeah, this Michigan team has a lot of stars everywhere across the field. The Bearcats will get a draw control win off of a foul from the Wolverines. A one-second difference between the shot clock and game clock, so I imagine the Bearcats will run this clock down for the last shot of the half. Here's Ottensmeyer across. It's Julie Rose. Maybe not. Looks like they're eager to score. Playing aggressive. Gina Oliver, a really aggressive coach. Lex putting the pedal to the metal. Here's Murphy. Over now for Rose. Rose, try to give it to Callahan. That one got knocked out of her stick by Taylor Cullen. But Kylie Joy able to get the ball back. Here's Rose. Up to Ottensmeyer. On the left side, trying to dodge. A little spin move, shovels it to Callahan. Callahan fakes, trying to go to her right, being defended there, trying to dodge through two. Callahan just trying to do a little too much there. But it looks like she'll get a free position chance on the left side of the fan. She's on the far left hash of the eight meter fan. She'll get a free position shot. 0 for 1 today. 0 for 2 for the team. Let's see if she can bury this one. 34 to go in the half. They set up. Whistle blows, and it looks like a false start on Josie Gooch. I even saw that all the way from up here. I was here. about to say, <laughs> are there false starts? Because I was signaling false start. I saw her jump. <laughs> I didn't know if there's any false starts on the cross. Yes, a false start on the free position. Allows Callahan for another try. She'll get it. She'll shoot. And that gets in. Pass behind O'Greedy. And Callahan able to score for the Bearcats. Their second goal of the day. Callahan drove in. Shot it. The left side. That one just found a way to sneak in and end up in the back of the net. Now there's 29 seconds left. And we've seen Michigan play with a lot of tempo. We, see, uh, we saw him go on a 70-yard counterattack in 12 seconds. So if you're, if you're the Bearcats' defense, you have to be aware of how fast and quick this Michigan team can play. Yeah, and earlier in the quarter, too, a five-second difference between goals, so they don't even need 12 seconds. And there's 29 seconds left on the clock. Plenty of time for the Wolverines to do it, but also plenty of time for the Bearcats to do it and maybe get even closer, lose, or excuse me, Make the deficit only seven points. Yeah, and it really depends on this jaw control right here. If the Bearcats can win it, they are going to push it and try to score again with 29 seconds left to go in this half. So that's Callahan's seventh of the season. His draw control. Ball is still on the ground being fought for. Off the stick of Rose, and it will be off her stick. And out last touched by the Bearcats. So the Wolverines will start a fast break chance. Here's Smith. Down now for Stein at X. It's Davis. Five seconds left. Davis looks to Stein. Stein on the crease. She shoots and she scores. Another buzzer beater goal for the Michigan Wolverines at the end of the quarter. Sneaky. Was that Callie Norris? I could not tell. She looks like they found a way at the left side of the goal. Just put it right at the top. I mean, I believe, this Michigan team plays with a ton of tempo. I believe that was CC Stein able to just 
get it on the crease and just basically force her way to the cage as the Bearcats defense couldn't keep her outside. And she's able to give Michigan, like I said, another buzzer beater win, bu buzzer beater goal, excuse me, at the end of the quarter. So as we enter the half, Wolverines are up 11 to two against the Bearcats. You're listening to UC Women's Across on Bearcats Radio.
Here we are back for the women's lacrosse game on Bearcast Radio. I'm Alex Perez alongside Christian Pagan. Wolverines have an 11-2 lead over the Bearcats. A lot of goals being scored. Four from Jill Smith, three from Kaylee Dyer, and then one from CeCe Stein, Callie Norris, Schwab, and then Josie Gooch as well. Julia Schwab, that is. A lot of goals being scored by the Wolverines. As you said, the Bearcats have had a lot of breakdowns. What have you seen in both quarters so far? Well, in the first quarter for the Bearcats, like that first seven, eight minutes, they had a great start. You know, they were shutting down the Michigan attack, and they even scored, I believe, when they had a man-up scenario. But towards the end of the first quarter, the Michigan Wolverines offense started to click. And in the second quarter, the draw controls. The Michigan Wolverines really dominated possession. They dominated ball control, passed great, and really controlled the game and tempo, and that's really what got them to this advantage. You know, they found little creases, and they wore out that Bearcats defense, allowing to their scoring opportunities. Yeah, like you said, it to the draw controls too, Bearcats have only won one draw control in each quarter, which has been a huge problem compared to Michigan's 11. They also have 11 goals. 11 to 2, both on the draw control and the scoring side. Also, Bearcats have nine shots on goal, but a lot of saves made by Erin O'Grady. She's got seven on the day. Yeah, I mean, just an incredible goalie, but for the Bearcats, they've had opportunities to score. Like you mentioned, nine shots on goal. They've had the opportunities. They're just not executing, and that has to deal with we have Erin O'Grady behind excuse me, guarding the net. You know, such an incredible goalkeeper. This is why Michigan is 10th in the country right now. Held Jacksonville to one goal in the previous matchup. It's, it's going to be tough for the Bearcats, but they definitely had their chances. Yep, Aaron O'Grady as well has some history against the Bearcats. She last faced them in 2022 and had a season best four saves against them in that route of a 20-7 to win for the Wolverines. And right now it looks like they could be on their way to that score right now. Again, Bearcats are looking for their first win against the Wolverines, but going to be a lot to take over here in the third and fourth quarter if they want to even have a chance. Yeah, down by nine. Yeah, 30 minutes left to go in this furious and impressive Michigan attack. How can you stop them, and how can your attack get going? If you're the Bearcats, they've had some possessions in that second quarter in which their defense... You know, they forced a 90-second violation. If they have that great defense paved the way for their attack, that's definitely a good sign, and that's how it should be. So hopefully the Bearcats make the proper adjustments and come out swinging in the second half. Yeah, we'll see what they do. As Christian Pagan, you're going to get a chance to do the play-by-play -play for the lacrosse. First right. time. <laughs> First time for everything. I'm sure it'll be exciting. Yeah, I'm going to need you to, you know, help me out with these <laughs> hand signals because they're really messing with me right now. Yeah, I, I'm going to need uh, need to get the playbook out for all <laughs> the hand signals. I'm going to need the rule book in front of me. <laughs> Another changes last year, I believe, were uh, the ground balls. I don't know, that was a rule implemented a couple of years ago. They used to not be able to have the ball on the ground at all, which definitely changed the whole game. So here we go to begin the second half at the faceoff at the 50. You're going to have Lily Monson Monero for the Wolverines and Julie Rose for the Bearcats. Bearcats are down 11-2 here at the start of the second half. Referee goes away, whistle blows, and the Wolverines will take control of this draw control. In possession right now will be Jill Smith. She has four goals today. She gives it off to Monson Monero. Wolverines inside the Bearcats offensive 30. Right now it's going to be Josie Gooch with it. Walking the 20 at the left hash. Wolverines will work it around the 12 meter fan. Inside the end zone. Wolverines still working around. Jill Smith gets it off to Gooch. Gooch is going to drive in. He's going to pass it around. Wolverines playing very patiently right now. Right now, Schwabi has it. Inside, attempted to find the cutting Gooch, but cannot get it. Bearcats regain possession. Going the other way with it will be Thanati. She has it. The 40 is going to go across pass. Bearcats enter the Michigan defensive 30. 
And that one is poked away, stolen, intercepted by Grace Callahan, one of those great defenders for the Michigan Wolverines. And on the counterattack, great pass by Jill Smith to Dyer, but she cannot get her stick on it. This will fall into the ends of the Wolverines still will maintain possession. 13.33 left to go here in the third quarter. Schwabe gives it off to Gooch. Gooch to Montemanero. Wolverines working around behind the end zone at the moment. I imagine, too, with a nine-goal lead, Wolverines are definitely going to want to wind down some clock on every single offensive possession. It begins with wearing down the Bearcats' defense inside the eight-meter fan that's going to be Federal. Schwabe gives it off to Montemanero, gives it off to Gooch. Gooch doesn't go inside, swinging shot by Federoff is no good above the net, but the Wolverines will regain possession. Stein's going to give it off. She can get it right back behind the goal. Swings around the Dyer. Dyer, a cross-court pass. This one is shot by Schwabi. It's no good. Fight for it. And it will be Bearcats' ball. Good save there, too, from Victoria Makers as Schwab trying to shoot that far left side. Makers having to move her stick all the way from her left side to her right knee. Just a good save there. And a bad pass by the Bearcats will give the Wolverines the ball right back. And a violation on the Wolverines will give the Bearcats the ball right back. Yeah, it looks like she started the possession too early. Didn't wait for the referee for her signal. But sometimes you need the referee signal. Sometimes you don't, almost like as in soccer. You just jump the gun. So, Ottensmeyer has it. She's running around to give it off to one of her defenders. That'll be Finati. Bearcats are at the opponent 40-yard line. Finati has it again. Finati's looking, crosses to 30, and goes backwards looking to find an open pass. She's going to cross field pass. Bearcats so waiting to enter. Now they do. Fanati has it at the 20. She's going to give it off to Elizabeth Murphy. Murphy inside the end zone. She enters the 8-meter fan. She's going to drive in. Steps back. Looking for an open teammate. It's going to be Joya has it behind the net. Joya's going to give it off to Antemeyer. Back at the 22 left hash. Ansmeyer's going to go to work. He's going to drive in. Shot no good. Saved. Looks like off the stick of Aaron O'Grady, but the Bearcats will retain possession. What a rip, too, from Ottensmeyer. I'm surprised O'Grady was able to get over to that. This would be Joya. Joya enters the 8-meter fan, gets it off to Ottensmeyer. Ottensmeyer directing traffic. This is going to be Murphy. Inside shot. It's saved. By O'Grady. Looks like the cutting Callahan had a chance, but O'Grady said not today. Wolverines on the counterattack. This will be Kotorowski. Wolverines now enter the Bearcats defensive portion of the field. Right now, Norris has it, gets it off to Smith. Smith does not aware of the defender behind her, but she escapes and gets it off to Montemanero. Allie Keith trying to be a little sneaky there. Thought for sure she was going to have her, but fortunately, Smith was able to pick up on it at the last second. Wolverines working around the 12-meter fan. This is going to be Norris has it. Norris gives it off the Stein behind the goal. They're going to try a pass. This is going to be a violation on the Bearcats, so a free position shot for the Wolverines. Yes, and it'll be Callie Norris to take it, who scored... Earlier in today's game, gave Michigan the 10 to 1 lead at the time. Norris loses it, but ref blows a whistle, and it will be a violation, I believe, on the Bearcats. So the Michigan Wolverines will do this again. Looks like she got pushed in the back. So it will be Norris again from the right side of the 8 meter fan. She's going to drive in, shoots off the ground, no good. Fight for it, ends up in the hands of Stein. Dyers has it. Gives it off to Smith, the preseason All-American who's already wrecked this game for the Bearcats. 
Gives it off. Dyers has it. Outside the eight meter fan gives it off to Burke. Burke. Back up to Matamanero inside. Smith shoots and scores. Jill Smith. Five goals today. And she puts the Wolverines up 12 to 2 with 9.01 left to go in the third quarter. The key there, too, that a lot of the goals that Michigan has scored today has been a lot of cuts from low to high or high to low. And again, Montemarano Monte, Monte able to find Smith as she's cutting up from the extended goal line to the center of the fan, gets it right in her stick, and she's able to just quick release it right into the top left corner for a Michigan 12th goal of the day. And we talked about it in the pregame show. For this Bearcats defense to be successful, you cannot allow the Wolverines to have space. And today, they have had space with creases and cuts. And that's been a huge reason why they have as many goals as they do today with 12. Yeah, Jill Smith, just an outstanding player. Like I said, six career goals against UC, five last year, and she matches that today with her fifth of the day. Five goals on seven shots. The tag along as well as two assists. Seven points today for Jill Smith, the preseason All-American. And the Wolverines will win this draw control as Montemarano is fouled. She'll pick it up at midfield. And she'll swing it around. Wolverines have done a great job today on every end of the field, just absolutely dominating this game. Class. She's going to give it off. Wolverines working around inside the 8-meter fan behind the net is going to be Caroline Davis. Wolverines have it at the top of the 12-meter fan. Waiting for something to happen. Smith has it, passes off to Davis. She wasn't expecting it, but there to recover will be Ava Class. Yeah, Davis almost looked like she was scared of the ball hitting her. Smith has it at the 15, gives it off. This is going to be the driving in. Peyton Shreves, that one is no good. Fight for it. Popped up, and looks like the Bearcats will end up with it. Michigan does not get anything out of that possession. Almost a defensive breakdown, but they were able to swarm Shreves at the last second, which caused her to not get a great shot off. Cross field pass. This one ends in the hands of Grace Jenny. Grace Jenny, she has it, and she goes out of bounds, and it will be Wolverine's ball. Not exactly sure about that. I thought she, for sure she didn't step on the line. She tried to plead her case, but obviously the referee thought otherwise. Haley Polk, the defender, is pushing. She has it, gives it off to her teammate, Caroline Davis. Smith has it at the three-yard line near the sideline outside the 12-meter fan, walking to the 10, waiting for a play to develop. Wolverines working it around, looking to strike once again. Dyers has it. She's at the X. She's going to drive in, gives it off. A shot by Class is no good wide left. That was an absolute rocket, too, from the stick of class. Ava Class missed last season due to injury. Wolverines have it within the eight meter fan. This is going to be Dyers. Dyers already has a hat trick. She wants more in that one. Ends up in the back of the net and chucks her stick. <laughs> Gives the Wolverines a 13 2 lead. I for sure thought that was going to hit the referee. That was pretty close. <laughs> a little emphatic on that goal from Kaylee Dyer. Able to just cut to the middle and rip it again in the top corner. And unfortunately, the 13th goal given up by the Bearcats today. Pure domination by the Wolverines as we step aside here on Bearcat Sports Radio. You are listening to Women's Lacrosse.
And we welcome you back to historic Nippert Stadium here on this fine Wednesday afternoon. Here with women's lacrosse, the Wolverines are up 13-2 against your Cincinnati Bearcats, headlined by Jill Smith. Five goals, two assists, and her partner in crime, Kaylee Dyer, four goals as well on four shots. Yeah, they have just been finding ways to pick apart the Bearcats' defense getting in. I mean, Jill Smith, though, with an unreal goal at the end of uh, the half, or excuse me, in one of the <laughs> in the middle of the quarter, an unreal goal. It should be on the Sports Center top ten later. But they've just been picking apart this defense, cutting low to high, cutting low, high to low. And they're just finding ways to get past this Bearcats defense. They got to tighten it up and you know not let Michigan have the ball for as long. And like you mentioned, they are just finding ways with their talent all across the field, just dominating this game here. For the draw control will be Lily Montemarano against Julie Rose. 5.13 left to go in the third quarter. Referee bros her whistle, and this draw control will be won and recovered by the Michigan Wolverines. Looks like it was a fight for it, but it ends up in the stick of Julia Schwabe. Thought for sure Ali Keith had the ground ball, but it just kept popping out of her stick. And unfortunately, into the stick of the Wolverines. Federoff has it. She's going to give it off to, looks like Gooch at the 22 yard line at the right hash. Wolverines will be working around. They go behind the net, and that one is dropped, so that will be a turnover for the Wolverines. Player Cats get possession. Yeah, Caroline Davis looks like she just took her eye off the ball, and it dropped out of her stick and out of bounds. And Player Cats start to clear. Speed. Kylie Joya has it inside the Michigan 30. Ottensmeyer working around the 12-meter fan, gives it off to Allie Keith. Keith will go to the end zone, and a violation on the Wolverines, so it will re the ball will stay with the Bearcats. It will maintain possession. Keith will have it at the 12-meter fan. She's going to give it off to Murphy. Murphy gives it off. This is going to be a shot. No good by Geller. Recovered by the Wolverines in the end zone. That will be Josie Gooch. Gooch has it the five. She's going to dish it off. Wolverines working the ball around on this counterattack. Crossing midfield, they give it off. This is going to be Meyer Rutherford. Rutherford goes inside the Bearcats' defense, and the Wolverines will have a chance to capitalize on their 11-point lead. Wolverines working it around. Caroline Bean has it, gives it off the Federals. Patient offense. 49 seconds left on the shot clock. Wolverines going around the world for the second time in this possession. Trying to find a seam. Be Callie Norris has it. Goes inside. Gooch. Double team. She ends up coming out of the 12-meter fan, and the Wolverines are working it around. 24 seconds left on the shot clock. Crossfield pass. Gooch has it. She's going to shoot, and that one ends up in the back of the net. But it looks like a foul occurred by Gooch and looks like Jaller, excuse me, Geller took contact, so that'll be a yellow card yeah. on the Wolverines. No goal. Geller went down pretty hard. I wasn't exactly sure what happened. She seems to be okay walking off under her own power, but a little shaken up. She's grabbing at her back. Didn't limp off. It's holding her face right now, bent over. Not sure if she took anything to the face or or what. It's maybe on the follow-through on the shot from Gooch. She immediately went down and favored her face. So it ends up with a yellow card for Josie Gooch. And I think, yeah, I think what happened was just the follow-through that ended up hitting Geller in the face. Would cause her to go down. 
So no goal for the Wolverines. Bearcats are on the counterattack. This will be Elizabeth Murphy. Ansmeyer has at the 10 inside the 12-foot fan. In between the hashes, gives it off to Joya. Joya at the 8-meter fan gets it off, and the Bearcats will work it around, trying to find a seam or a cut. Ansmeyer gives it off to Joya. Bearcats are looking for something. Ansmeyer, spin move. Thought about it, no. Gives off to Joya. Joya inside. The Bearcats have an opportunity, and a foul will be called on the Wolverines. And grabbing at her arm, too, as she went down is Haley Joy Simpson. Hard contact, as you mentioned. So the Bearcats will have a free possession shot. This will be Joy Simpson, the 5'9 freshman from Weston, excuse me, Reston, Virginia. And it's also will be a, another yellow card to the Wolverines, so it'll be two men up, two men up, excuse me. Also in the cage now for the Wolverines is Maya Santa Maria as they took O'Grady out after that 13th goal for him. Joy Simpson waiting on the referee's signal from the top of the key. So shoot that one off the ground, no good. A violation on the Bearcats, so Wolverines will get possession. Looks like they're going to say that Haley Joy Simpson stepped into the crease is why they said no push on her. She was asking for a push in the back, but she had already stepped in the crease. So the Wolverines got the ball because of that. Have the ball, and they are pushing. Wolverines within the Bearcats' defense. Federoff has it. At the 20 yard line, waiting. With one minute left. There's a one second difference between game clock and shot clock. So we expect the Wolverines will milk this clock all the way down and attempt a last second shot here to end off the third quarter. I understand what they're trying to do, but while you're two men up, you got to try and pressure her or something instead of just letting the clock run down. I get Michigan's good at moving the ball, but you have a two man advantage. Do something, trying to get this ball back. But 30 just, seconds remain. She's just literally standing there waiting for this clock to run out. <laughs> 17 seconds left. Federoff still has it now. She's moving. She has the 25. She's going to give it off. They're going to try to work around. 10 seconds left. Wolverines need to do something if they want to capitalize, but there's five seconds left, and at this rate, it looks like they will not go for the last second shot, and that will end the third quarter. Wolverines are up 13-2 to two after scoring two goals in the third period to extend their lead to 11 points in that quarter. Alex, what did you see that was notable by the Michigan Wolverines? They just controlled the clock. I mean, as you saw in that last possession, Federoff, she was just holding the clock, waiting for it to run down. But even so, at the beginning of the quarter, they had two chances to kind of get more goals, but they just kind of let the clock run down to about 45 to 30 seconds before they actually went to offensive work. So Michigan just kind of doing game control, clock control right now. As you mentioned, game control and clock control, they've been doing that the entire game. I mean, we saw it earlier in the first half maintaining that control and wearing out that Bearcats defense. Yeah, Bearcats luckily led, held the scoring to only two goals, but again, I think it's because Michigan wasn't trying so as hard to get to the crease, get to the cage, and put, put something past makers. But uh, looks like hopefully the Bearcats can find a goal this quarter because they weren't able to find the cage last quarter. In that quarter... Michigan, 3-0 in draw controls versus the Bearcats. Four shots on goal compared to the Bearcats, two. Both teams that quarter with two saves apiece, but the difference, Michigan, two goals, and the Bearcats, none. We'll take a quick break here on Bearcats Sports Radio. Don't go anywhere. Fourth quarter coming right up.
back for the start of the fourth quarter. I'm Alex Perez alongside Christian Pagan. His play-by-play -play duties will be handed back over to me as Christian Pagan will do the analyzation, color commentary for this game. Wolverines up 13-2. Had two goals that last quarter. In for the keeper now is Maya Santa Maria. For the Michigan Wolverines, she was a inside the cross midseason All-America Honorable Mention at Michigan. Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week last year, March 7th. Two-time academic All-Big Ten in 2022 and 2023. And also a two-time University of Michigan Academic Achievement Award recipient. Bearcats, no draw control to start the quarter since they ended the quarter with possession. So they will start the offense. Here's Ottensmeyer with it, getting a pass from Jenny. Ottensmeyer up to the top now. It's Callahan. Callahan's got it. She looks, still running with it. Now at X for Joya. Skip pass to Murphy over her stick, and it's going to be a little too far for her to save it. It'll go out of bounds, and the Wolverines will start the clear. And you mentioned Maya Santa Maria. She was the fourth player to tally 100 or more saves in a single season, I believe, in Michigan history. An outstanding feat that is. As play restarted, Josie Gooch got pushed out of bounds with the ball, so it'll be Bearcats' possession once again. Here is Lauren Ottensmeyer up to the top for Cameron Callahan on the left side. She looks, will run it down the left side of the 12-meter fan, back at X for Joya. Joya to Callahan. Looks, Callahan trying to drive. Nowhere to go, up to the top for Ottensmeyer. Lots of cutters in the middle. Ottensmeyer trying to dodge, now to Callahan. Drop the shovel pass, picked up by Gooch, and she'll start the clear. Here's the counterattack. Michigan can be so deadly here with these counterattacks. Here's Callie Norris, Alexis Rich on her. Norris will pull up. Still being defended by Rich. Out to the edge. And she'll give it off now for the Wolverines to start their offense. Here's Fedorov. And a whistle is being blown. Not exactly sure what was called there. It's going to be a green card. It's going to go to the Wolverines. It's going to be on number two, it looks like, Caroline Bean. Not exactly sure what this call is. Seems to be confusion on both sides. I tried hearing the ref, and I think she said too many on the field. Might be too many on the field, so serving the penalty is going to be Annabelle Burke. Could happen as a lot of substitutions happen quick and fast in the cross, almost as they do in ice hockey as well. 12.43 left in the fourth quarter. Michigan up 13-2. Bearcats start to clear all the way from their own end zone. And they're already up in midfield. It's Danny Milkvey. Being pressured there by CeCe Stein, but she's able to get into the restraining line and start the offense. Bearcats a man up. Dakota, she's seeing her some action for the first time today. Gives it up to Julie Rose. Rose looks. Now here's Geller. Geller thought about pulling the trigger, decided not. Back up to Rose and over across. Bearcats working around. Here's Joya at X. Up to Geller. Geller thought about it. And a violation on Michigan, so it'll be a free position shot for Ava Geller. Bearcats already one for four on the free position shots today. Cameron Callahan was the earlier goal scorer on it. Let's see if Geller can capitalize. The whistle blows, and she got a shot, but it looked like a false start on the Wolverines once again. Looks like Ava Klaas. So the other Ava, Ava Geller, <laughs> will start it. The whistle blows. She shoots off the crossbar. Had the top right wide open and just ring it off the pipe. And the Wolverines start the clear. Now here's Annabelle Burke as she was released from the box. A fast break chance. Here's Norris. Down low for Davis out of her stick and into the stick of the goalkeeper, Victoria Makers, for the Bearcats. 
on that Michigan counterattack. Great ball moving, but just couldn't end up end up with the ball in her stick, which resulted in a turnover for the Wolverines. Otherwise, great ball movement and great decision making, but just couldn't capitalize. Bearcats able to clear it into the restraining line. Callahan over to Joya. Joya to the 10, getting instructions from her coach. Here is Cameron Callahan now back with it. Backs up to the 25, points to the right side. Gives it to Joya. Joya looks, trying to dodge to the right. A nice little shovel pass for Murphy. Defended by Jordan Harrison of the Wolverines. Murphy back with it. Pulls it out into the cutting Geller. Just out of her stick. Excuse me, that was Joya. And into the stick of Maya Santa Maria. That one almost dribbled in. <laughs> yeah, Very <it> close. <laughs> Very close to dribbling in, but didn't have enough speed on it. Wolverines start the clear. And that one intercepted. A nice one-handed catch there by Ava Geller. And she'll turn on the Jets. Gets around Harrison. Will she take it to the cage? She looks. Gets hit hard. And there's definitely going to be a yellow card on that. That's going to go to Haley Polk. Excuse me, Polk. An extension of the arms, too, on the check. You can stick check in women's lacrosse. Just not that hard. <laughs> yeah, Geller's taking a lot of contact this game. So she'll get another chance at a free position shot, too, right at the center hash inside the 8-meter fan. 9.47 to go in the fourth quarter. Let's see if she takes the shot or if she pulls out for the man-up advantage and work the offense. I think you have to take the shot. In a game like this where you're already down 11, wouldn't hurt. Geller shoots, saved by Santa Maria. No deception there, telegraphed that shot all the way. Wolverines will start the clear. And the stick now of Cullen. Back to the keeper, Santa Maria. Back to Cullen. Able to track it into her stick. Being double teamed by Dakota and Murphy. Able to escape danger by passing it to Callahan. Both Callahans, too, on the USA 20, USA U20 training team. Both got called to the training camp. Both made it, Cameron Callahan and Grace Callahan, as well as Jordan Harrison. So a lot of stars on this field today representing the United States of America for lacrosse. Looking to compete in Hong Kong next year in 20, or excuse me, I believe this year in the summer of 2024. Wolverines with it. Seeming to milk the clock, just standing with it now, is Caroline Davis. He starts some movement with 30 seconds left on the shot clock. With it now is Jill Smith. Or excuse me, that's number 24 for the Wolverines. They're still working it around out of the stick of Caroline Bean. Looks like a bit of a foul there, though, from Danny Milkvie. 15 left to go on the shot clock. And there's a rip and uh, looks like going to be a violation. I'm not sure if it's going to be on the Bearcats. And it'll be on the Wolverines so the Bearcats will start to clear. In these last eight minutes right here, you're down 11. This will really determine the character of your team. If the Bearcats just give up you know, it's not a good looks, but if they continue to play hard and play aggressive, even though you're down 11, that shows a lot of character in this team. Yeah, the Bearcats have been a team of resilience. Like I said, last year have not lost two games in a row. Unfortunately, that streak will be broken today. But Gina Oliver is not a coach that's going to let you give up. You're going to play all 60 minutes no matter what the score is, whether you're up 11 or down 11, as Lauren Ottensmeyer was trying to look to dodge. Couldn't do so. Cameron Callahan now with it at the top of the fan. Up for Keith. Keith dodging to her right. Stutter steps. Another stutter step. Can't get through. Here's Murphy. Murphy looks. Try to give it to Ottensmeyer just out of the reach of her stick. Callahan picks up the ground ball. Callahan sticking her left. Dodging to her right. Back to her left. A little spin move. Pulls out. Still with it. Being double teamed. And unfortunately loses the ball. 
That is Cameron Callahan's third turnover of the day. Yeah, she's holding the ball for too long in that possession, and at that point, the Wolverines just started double-teaming, and that one, it's hard to be a double-team in any sport. I get she's your star player. You want the ball in her stick, but sometimes she's just doing a little too much as the Bearcats almost lost the clear, but Michigan lost the ball, got it stick-checked. Went out of bounds, so now it's Bearcats' ball. 80 seconds on the shot clock as they set up your offense. Joya to Callahan on the left hash. Over to the right hash now. It's Simpson. Simpson, a little move. Can't get through. Being poked there by Burke, but able to regain the ground ball. Here's Murphy. Murphy working on Harrison. Sticking her left hand. Over to Joya. Joya, she's got it, but it, it's going to be a violation, or it might be a timeout, actually. It's going to be a timeout taken by Gina Oliver. Wanted to maybe settle down the Bearcats. So with 5.55 to go here in the fourth quarter, the Wolverines are up 13-2. to two. You're listening to UC Women's Lacrosse on Bearcast Radio. Here we are back with 5.55 to go here in the fourth quarter. Looking at the upcoming Bearcats schedule, they play at Robert Morris on Sunday. Next Friday, they're back home against Central Michigan. Two days later on Sunday, they'll be in Indianapolis at Butler. And then February 29th and March 3rd, they'll have Youngstown State and Kent State at home, respectively. Two teams that they beat last year. And unfortunately, Bearcats 0-3 this year, or excuse me, 0-3 all-time against Michigan. Looks like they're going to be 0-4 unless something drastically changes in this game. I mean, the Michigan Wolverines, you know, it's such a great team, just overwhelming the Bearcats, you know, with their defense, their attack, you know, just such an overall great team. Future is bright for the Wolverines. Yeah, number 10 ranked coming into today, and I'm sure it'll help their rankings with this. 11 goal lead as the Bearcats go to work. Here's Lauren Ottensmeyer trying to dodge around. Gives it to Murphy. Murphy looks a shot and she scores. Elizabeth Murphy putting it in the back of the net for the third goal of the day for the Bearcats. So Ottensmeyer going from left to right inside the eight meter fan then gives it off to Murphy. He's going right to left. Nice little pick concept. Got the space, shot it, ends up in the back of the net. Great play by the Bearcats. Yeah, Julia Schwab, too, was on the defense. They picked up the pick pretty well, picked up the switch. There's a little shovel pass from Ottensmeyer to Murphy, but Murphy just got the edge and was able to rip it with her left hand all the way against the grain to the right side past Santa Maria. And she finds herself on the board today. And as you mentioned, got the edge. She got that little bit of space. 
which allowed her to get a good shot off, and that one ends up in the back of the net. That was Elizabeth Murphy's first goal of the season. Last year, she had 13 goals, 9 assists, before having a lower body injury and missing the rest of the season. She had one assist in the season opener against Marquette. So she finds herself with a goal today. Bearcats won that draw control. Here's Ottensmeyer looking to go to work quick and then pulls out. Here's Murphy, the most recent goal scorer. Murphy looks, trying to work on Grace Callahan. Here's Ottensmeyer now. Back at X for Joya. Bearcats seeming to settle down. Murphy now. A lot of cutters. She can't find any. Murphy still with it, being defended by Grace Callahan. Up to the top for Ottensmeyer. Ottensmeyer looking to dodge. A little sidestep juke move. Spins around a shot in her left hand, and she scores. Lauren Ottensmeyer on the assist from Elizabeth Murphy. So Ottensmeyer got it at the 20-yard line in between the hashes, and it was one-on-one. -on -one. She went to work, beat her defender, got close enough to the goal, and had a great shot. And just like that, too, Elizabeth Murphy scored on a goal, assisted by Lauren Ottensmeyer, and they flip-flop right there for the fourth goal of the day for the Bearcats. And to begin that possession, they won the draw control, and they used that, paved the way for the offense, and their offense strikes again. So unfortunately, with 3.40 left to go in the fourth quarter, just a little, too little too late. But like you said, the Bearcats, knowing they were down by 11, they're playing for some pride, showing what their character is like. And like I said, Gina Oliver is not going to let this team give up. Exactly. And like you mentioned, the character is such an important aspect and element of any team. And the Bearcats, like you mentioned, down by 11, now down by 9. They're not going to give up. And that begins with coaching and Gina Thomas. She will not let this team give up. So the Wolverines this time win that draw control. And they go to work. Back at X now, it's Bean for Davis to Stein. Back to Davis. Back to Stein. They play catch. Here's Burke. Up to the top for Marciano. Across now for Shreves. Here's Norris. Norris pulling out. To Marciano. Marciano defended by Keith there. Now down, and here's a cutting Norris. Shot, oh, I believe that rang off the post. Not sure if Haley Darko saved that. As she is now in the cage for the Bearcats, replacing Victoria Makers. Here's Shreves with it at the top of the fan. Across to the left side for Stein. Back to Shreves. Shreves, a pass way over the head of Caroline Bean. And the Bearcats will start with the ball. 2.19 to go in the game. Let this good defense pave the way for your attacking offense. Capitalize. There's a little shove to the face of Ava Geller. Looks like it's going to be a penalty on Annabelle Burke. She had 12 goals, three assists, and 20 games played last year with two starts. She got her first goal. She had one goal versus UC last year and 18 goals in her 2022 season. Two-time academic All-Big Ten. Unfortunately finds herself now in the box. Bearcats are a man up. Two minutes remaining, and that pass escaped Elizabeth Murphy and a turnover for the Bearcats. Wolverines now start to clear. They're successful as they get into the restraining line inside the 30. With it now is Davis to Norris. I imagine the Wolverines are just going to kill time here. About a 17-second difference between shot clock and game clock, game clock. They milk it. Davis with it. Has it in her stick as she just kind of trots backwards towards the outside. Casually passes it to Norris, who casually passes it to Marciano. Over to Shreves, down to Stein. Stein with it. Back up to Shreves. 
Back to Stein. Looks like they're warming down. Shreves holds it. Michigan now, even strength. Here's Stein with it at X. Across for Davis. Davis back at X for Stein. Stein looks up to the top for Norris. Norris defended there by Keith, gets around. Back over to Shreves. Down low now to Davis. And that pass got deflected. Ball was on the ground, but picked up by Caroline Davis. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Wolverine still with it. Here's Shreves. Shreves, she's got a space to shoot and just over the net. A one second left remaining on the shot clock. Don't think Michigan is going to have time to inbound the ball and get a shot. Or it looks like it will be a free position shot, actually. They might have called shooting space. And Shreves will get it and rip it and scores. Peyton Shreves puts it in the top left pass Haley Darko and Michigan extends their lead to 10. Top left corner like you mentioned a lot of pace on that shot from the right side of the 8 meter fan ends up in the back of the net top left corner. Great shot right there by Peyton Shreves the 5'8 sophomore from Maryland. And in women's lacrosse when a team has a 10 goal lead it'll be a running clock so the running clock starts. I don't think they will get this draw control off in time. Two seconds and one as the horn sounds as the draw control started. And the Michigan Wolverines take down the Cincinnati Bearcats 14-4. to four. Just an outstanding game from the Wolverines. Yeah, I mean, total domination from the start to the end. We mentioned it a ton of times. They have talent everywhere on the field. In the goal, in defense, midfield tech, they have talent everywhere, and they are such a team, that, like such a great team with a lot of depth. So they can sub a lot in and out. And with a great team that allows you to have that depth, that can really wear out your opponents, especially when you can go in your pocket and pull out a couple more players to sub in, and Michigan, just a great overall performance today. Yeah, talking about the depth, Peyton Shree scoring a goal as well as Callie Norris. Julie, or excuse me, Julia Schwab and CeCe Stein as well as Josie Gooch. But talk about the starters. Jill Smith and Kaylee Dyer led the way. Nine goals combined. Julie, or excuse me, Jill Smith with five goals, two assists. Kaylee Dyer with four goals. I mean, they, like I said, we said at the top of the broadcast, those are two people to watch. Jill Smith, she showed up today. Yeah, I mean, heck of a performance. Seven points today, seven shots. She had the acrobatic shot that was incredible. Just a great presence on the field, and she's so dangerous when she gets space. And we saw it happen multiple times today. When she gets a little bit of space or a one-on-one, -on -one, be careful because she is going to take advantage of that. So the Bearcats dropped their first two games, first against Marquette in Milwaukee, 18-12. They dropped to Michigan today, 14-4. They start the season off 0-2, but coming up, they play Robert Morris on Sunday. I imagine that's a team that they're going to take it to them. Yeah, I think that would be a great chance for the Bearcats to rebound. As you mentioned, 0 2 to start the season, but have let this motivate you throughout the season. Hopefully, you know, you got a team in Robert Morris. Hopefully, you can take advantage of that and get a win and, you know, make sure that paves the way for the rest of the season. Gives you momentum when you got an opponent like Central Michigan and other opponents coming in here to Nippert Stadium. Yep. Central Michigan, that'll be February 23rd as the Bearcats will take you on. The Central Michigan lacrosse team. For Christian Pagan and Alex Perez, you're listening to UC Women's Across on Bearcast Radio. Thank you so much for listening. We'll tune in next time.